So we're going to talk about some basic still life painting. Um, as far as that goes, when you go to set up a still life object, in this case we want to work monochromatically. The object of, that I've chosen is a little bit more challenging because of the fact that it um, has a shiny surface to it. And um, that's really going to challenge us as far as capturing the light and the dark um, when we're looking at the object itself. But for the most part, it's a pretty basic object because it is monochromatic. And that'll let you look at the dark to light and the transitions. What I want to draw your attention to when we're actually looking at the object itself is um, you're going to pay attention to the fact that it has like this form um, of the cross or whatever that's on the front of it. And then otherwise you have uh, the shadows that we're looking at. And when we're blocking in the object, we want to get the general shape of the whole thing before we actually start adding those highlights and those low lights and block things in. So um, we'll go ahead and switch cameras right now, and I'll go over the basics of that process with you. All right, so as far as working with this object goes, um, the things that you're going to be paying attention to is you're going to look at, um, like I said, the actual form itself. Um, it's usually best if you work with a uh, graphite stick so that you can actually get a drawing of the form of the object and then begin um, painting after getting that form captured. And if you're wondering about the actual form that I'm looking at, um, you, I'll have an image queued up that you can reference and you can pull up that image, download it to your file and download that image to your computer so that you can look at it to see what I'm looking at. Um, what I'm paying attention to is the gesture drawing process and you're going to need to look at gesture drawing, um, the recorded video content that is also posted in this course lesson. There, I've got um, a basic basic shape broken down of the object and this is the dark space on in the inside there and I want to get the form so I'm pretty confident that that's what it should look like so once I actually have that figured out um, then so we have this gesture then now what we want to do is we want to get a wash, which means we're going to want to get a basic layer of color that covers up the entire surface. And um, most painting goes by layers, unless you're working with watercolor. But as far as a, both acrylic and oil paint go, you're going to work with it in layers. One thing you're going to notice right now is my paint is super wet. I'm working with a brush that holds a lot of water, which is letting me put down a really thin layer of paint, and that is just perfect because we're going to be putting several layers of paint on top of this. So if it's thin, then that lets us build up the depth that we need to. One thing you want to keep in mind when you're blocking in the color like we are right now is um, you don't need to have the object perfect, but you definitely are going to make your job easier in the long run if you keep it pretty close to what it is that you're actually looking at. And I've found some of my students have expressed frustration in the object moving over time. Um, especially if you are where you have your still life set up, if you're going to have, um, like so many people, a family that's coming home that's going to bump the object and move it around, or the light source is going to change, which is pretty typical. Um, so many artists that paint for a living are artists that are well known. Throughout art history, actually, um, when they paint, they paint at the same time of day, or they use that marvelous tool 
otherwise known as a camera. And they take a quick image of the object that they're painting so that they can consistently keep the object in mind and they don't have to worry about whether or not the shadows and the light is changing from one sitting to the next, which can be pretty frustrating. So I'm just blocking in this general shape and as I said earlier, the, the paint is thin enough that um, if I want to, I can add more layers to make sure the form is exactly what I want it to be. Um, so there's two different techniques that I'm using right now. One is referred to as blocking in, which means you're just getting the general shape and it's really blocky. So it's really just this solid thing that we're sticking paint to get the form. And then the other thing that we're doing is called a wash, which is a thin layer of paint that covers a pretty substantial area. So um, I've got the object there, and now that I'm looking at it, a couple of the things I'm noticing is that this, the way that it, it um, moves up like that is too, it's too flattened out. And so after it dries, what I'll end up doing is going back in and adding some paint on the top of it that'll let me clean up that edge and cut it down some so that it's actually closer to the correct form. Okay, so we're looking at the object itself here and um, we want to talk a little bit about the shadows that you see in the object. And what you want to pay attention to is um, where the, so we see these highlights that are shining off the surface and then you also see um, some of the shadows that are created by the form itself and the shadows in the handle and then the shadow where the object is actually touching ground and this interior shadow and if we're looking thinking about that um, that object that I've drawn that I've painted for you and the way that we blocked in the color and everything so um, when we're looking at the object itself we want to talk about how to actually start to capture some of this shadow and you'll notice that the shadows are the darkest like where it's farthest from the light is the general rule. So some of the shadows are sharpest like inside this handle here and then also on the edge where it rests on the table underneath of this lip and then obviously like right on the inside with this gradation. 